Rick Spielman is with Gresh and Fourier. Rick, good afternoon. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, man, Rick, but you're supposed to be doing less work, not more work. <laughs> I mean, what are you, what are yeah, you doing? No. Well, my wife said you're supposed to be retired on an island on, off the coast of Florida, yet I have eight side jobs, so... <laughs> including taking phone calls from the Harbor Bay, wherever the hell you guys are at up there. <laughs> uh, so, Rick, what to your GMI has stood out to you about these group of athletes that you have been able to watch for most of this week? Yeah, no, I was able to get down here Wednesday just on another side job that I've been involved with. But just the initial impressions of what I saw this morning and, and yesterday watching practice is I think overall this is a, a really good group of uh, athletes down here. Uh, I've done a lot of them on tape just for the podcast, but uh, when you see them in person and see them move around, you know, just take the quarterback group compared last year's quarterback group that were down here to this year's. I thought Jim Nagy did an excellent job and, when you come down here and just for example the quarterback group it's do you put Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. who are probably the two highest rated quarterbacks down here in the senior bowl do you put them on opposite teams or do you put them together and I think he did a great job putting them together on the same team because all the scouts and personnel people down here want to see them in practice and throwing next to each other back to back and that's more important than maybe just evaluating the senior bowl game. Yeah, because we were so the national team just went and we were kind of watching a little bit on TV with Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. Then the American team, you have uh, obviously Joe Milton the third, Spencer Rattler, um, Bradley Carter. Pratt. I'm, I'm curious, yeah, Pratt, uh, yeah, Michael Pratt. What is it other than because those feel like the other names? Has one of these other guys, other than, the, I guess, the marquee quarterbacks that are there right now, popped a little more than the guys that everyone's paying attention to? Is it like me being a guest on the show, like just one of the other names? No, <laughs> no, no. You're, you're, listen, you're, you're, in a, you're a P1. You're a P1 in a prime spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard that before. So, yeah. No, I think Pratt has been a little better than I anticipated coming down with his arm talent. Uh, there's no question when you watch Spencer Rattler uh, that, you know, there's a lot of disc discrepancies on his grade, whether he's an early Saturday guy or does he get into the second round. But when you watch him throw, he throws as good as anybody. I think the biggest question mark on it is how good is his decision-making, how quickly he can process. The physical abilities there, although he's not as big as you may want at the quarterback position, but on Tuesday, for example, he threw an interception in the team period. And then yesterday, he looked really good. But the way the ball comes out of his hands, the way uh, he anticipates uh, receivers getting out of their routes, which is huge down here because he's never worked with these guys except for Leggett, uh, his, his teammate that's down there, who's another very talented receiver. Um, he's been impressive to me. So, but it's a great opportunity for these guys that may not be in the top five to try to start jockeying for a position and can Spencer Rattler potentially close the gap to, to put him in a, a Friday night type pick. For NFL GM Rick Spielman with Gresh and Fourier, Rick, the guy who once signed our Jermaine Wiggins. That's right. We'll, uh, we'll leave those documents sealed for right now with Rick because we want to talk to him about yeah. the draft. We don't but, have to hang up. Uh, but, Rick, uh, I'm curious from your end. You know, Fourier and I have talked a lot about evaluating quarterbacks because Marvin Harrison Jr. is so damn good. To me, there's no way he's not going to be on some boards the number one ranked player, but he might not be the number one guy in the draft. So, Rick, when you look at quarterbacks, what are the traits in a QB that you want that would make you feel good about drafting somebody very high in a draft? Yeah, that's the uh, burning bush question, I guess, because you can see the physical talent. You can see the ball come out of their hands. You can determine the accuracy. I think that it's the intangible part of it and how these guys perform uh, in pressure situations during a game, whether it's two minute in the fourth quarter when they're behind, and then trying to identify what type of leader they are. 
Um, and you guys, and, and, uh, uh, Wiggs, no offense to him, he was a much better football player than what he looks like when he walks in your building. But hell of a football player. But that's another subject. <laughs> um, but <laughs> can, you, can you identify those intangibles? Like, And I always gave the example of I know the quarterbacks have to be smart. But is there a way to see how quickly they process? Because I've been in meeting rooms, and some of the mistakes that I made are guys that are brilliant putting it on a board, regurgitating what the what the coach is saying or the coordinator is saying, sometimes even sounding better. But can they do all that and process that in less than the two and a half seconds they have uh, in the pocket? The other thing I think that you're seeing more and more of is these offenses in the NFL now starting to evolve to what type of athletes are coming out at that position. And I think that the athleticism also is a part of this too, but always going to be the burning bush question is, can you, or do you have some kind of system or formula as you go through this pre-draft process, able to identify those intangible traits that may not be physical that you can see that make these quarterbacks so successful in the NFL, a la Drew Brees, a la Tom Brady, a la, Matt Ryan's of the world. So, so we're talking to Rick Spielman, longtime NFL executive. Uh, I saw something in Wiggy that just you had to have him, right? So just had to sign him. And he, he paid dividends for you, didn't he, Rick? I mean, he played well yeah, for you guys. He, he, yeah, he was a phenomenal football player. Not only can he catch the ball, he, he can block. He did everything. And those are the type of players that you hopefully can put on your roster that help build the culture in your locker room. And he definitely was one of those guys. So speaking of that position, though, you know, you also mentioned that um, the NFL uh, evolves into what college provides. And what college seems to be providing, at least for me, Rick, is uh, an elite, athletic, multiple position, multiple, just like the second most reliable guy on your team next to the quarterback as far as volume and what they're asked to do is the tight end. Do you do you feel like that's an accurate you know uh, assessment of what's going on with that position? Yeah, well, if one of you two can answer that, uh, the tight end has evolved over the years, and not the traditional Y, you know, on the line blocking tight end. Uh, but looking at these athletes now that come out, because rarely do you see any college offenses line up in a tight end at the line of scrimmage. Uh, they're trying to create mismatches with these athletes. and she, But you got to be careful, too. Uh, like I give the great example of Laporta. Okay, now they didn't have great quarterback play. He didn't come from the most explosive offense at the University of Iowa. But look what he's done when he came into the league. So when you sit there and you evaluate him on tape, you're like, can this can this guy become a mismatch? Well, as they went through the pre-draft process, I believe he ran in the four fives. Uh, he ran more routes at these private workouts and pro days and everything. And you actually see the athleticism. And I give a lot of credit to Brad Holmes up there in Detroit for identifying that because you didn't see that on a college tape when you evaluated them. But nowadays, with the way the offenses have evolved, you know, you want to put the defense in a, I want a little bit of a uh, squeeze on, do I use an extra DB to cover this tight end like a Travis Kelsey? Or, you know, if you have 12 person out there or, you know, regular package where uh, two tight ends or two running backs and one tight end, do you treat that tight end like a receiver or do you treat that tight end like a traditional tight end to keep your three linebackers out there? So I think offenses are trying to put the squeeze on the defensive side of the ball on trying to create some of these mismatches if they're on a linebacker or potentially even a safety. Rick, I know that guys like Marvin Harrison stand out, but more and more we have more depth at the wide receiver position coming into the draft, I think, than ever before. How do you separate wide receivers in terms of like the rest of the normal wide receivers who aren't like a Marvin Harrison Jr. and some of the guys that you could end up seeing in the second and the third round, how do you as an evaluator try to differentiate those guys? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. Um, and I think this is going to be a very, very strong receiver class, much stronger 
even though we saw some good receivers that came out last year, this is going to be an excellent receiver class. And when you're down here at the Senior Bowl, and one of the guys that really stuck out to me so far is this Ricky uh, Parasol, the receiver from Florida. And I don't know if he's going to run four threes or four fours, but his precision as a route runner, his savvy to find open areas in the zone, his ability to set up DBs with a little shimmy or a little shake at the top of his route to get them on the back of his heels, and his ability to make catch. And I was saw it on tape, but then you see his ability to make plays with the ball in his hands after the catch, which, you know, we refer to as a uh, rack, his uh, run after catch ability. So you get an opportunity to see some of these guys that are probably going to be Friday guys and, and which ones that actually are sticking out. So there's going to be, a, I think, a very heavy receiver class this year, and there's going to be a lot of good players that are going to go on Friday beyond the top ones that if you, that, you know, the, you, the Odunze's and the uh, neighbors from LSU, Odunze from Washington, there is a very good receiver class. And I think there's going to be a lot of them that have an impact. Well, Rick, thanks for the time. I know uh, Fourier hit you up on the fly. We, uh, we do appreciate it. I'm sure our uh, morning show, the Greg Hill show that Wiggy is on, uh, Wiggy yeah. will be playing your audio as now, by the way, Rick, I know you haven't seen old, old wigs in a while. He, he looks the same. He is going to try <laughs> skiing for the first time tomorrow. Oh, my God. Tell him not to do that. <laughs> Unless he can do it with a broken leg. He can still do a show with a broken leg or something. <laughs> Let's not overestimate the uh, mismatch athletic ability that he had. See, there we love it. you. There it is. There Perfect. It is. Perfect. There's your warning. There, there it, is. it is. Hey, Rick. Thanks, thanks. Rick. We'll talk to you soon, Rick. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me on. There goes uh, Rick Spielman, former uh, NFL GM. Make sure we get uh, Greg that audio, please, because that's great. Don't break his leg.